Good morning, friends. Happy Epiphany Sunday and Happy New Year. Our gospel reading today is Matthew 2, 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there, ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. God calls for us to meet and follow his son in different ways, hearing various voices, and he sets us on roads and paths of his own choosing, if we are only willing to look and to listen and to follow. On Christmas Eve morning, we read about how Gabriel announced to the Virgin Mary God's plan of salvation and the part she would play in giving birth to the Son of God. Joseph heard the same story from an angel in a dream, and Gabriel also told Zechariah that he and his wife Elizabeth would have a son, John, who would prepare the way for the Messiah. On Christmas Eve at the evening service, we sang Hark the Herald Angels Sing, and we talked about the angel who brought good news of great joy to the shepherds watching their flocks, and how the glory of the Lord shone around them. And then a multitude of the heavenly host came and gave glory and praise to God and spoke of peace on earth and goodwill to all whom God favors. When the angels left and went to heaven, the shepherds headed for Bethlehem to see what had taken place that the Lord had made known to them. They knew which road to take, and they found Mary and Joseph with the child lying in a manger. The shepherds told all that they knew about the child, and then they took the road home glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen. And they weren't the only ones invited to meet the newborn king. Today we celebrate Epiphany, the visit of the wise men to the fairly newborn king. This is the story that was the focus of our lovely Advent Bible study written by our friend Reverend Daryl Olson. It was called Finding Peace During Advent. And it called us to hope and dream as we seek God by following the star that leads us to him. Also, Daryl suggested, though, if we can't see the light, we should ask God to come to us and give us his peace. The 
prophet Isaiah had foretold it, saying, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of God. Isaiah 60 verses 1 through 3 and 6b. The wise men came to bring Jesus tribute, homage, honor. Being star watchers, they had seen the star of Bethlehem at its rising and had followed that star to visit the true king. When we read Matthew's account of their visit, we are reminded that despite how this is depicted in nativity scenes like ours and in paintings and in the hymns we sing, the wise men were not kings themselves. They didn't visit a baby in a manger. And there weren't necessarily just three or even three of them. They were magi, which means astrologers. The baby was a child at this point in a house, and they were simply plural. The number of the wise men is not specified. We just know they show up at Herod's door looking for the new king, and Herod is less than thrilled, let's say. This news terrified Herod, terrified all of Jerusalem. So the king called a meeting of the chief priests and scribes to find out where this Messiah was supposed to be born, and of course, the answer was Bethlehem. They quoted the prophecy in Micah 5, 2, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Herod then told the wise men to go and find that child, and then report back to him where the child is, so that he could pay homage to the little king. That's verse 8, like Herod really wanted to worship this child. Obviously, Herod didn't think these men were wise at all. He thought they would lead him to the child he wanted to kill. But no such deal. The visitors followed the star until they came to the place it shone down on. They were thrilled with joy when they arrived at their destination when they saw the divinely royal child with his mother Mary. They bowed down, they paid him homage, and they gave him their gifts. The scripture doesn't say that one gave him gold, another gave him frankincense, and the other gave him myrrh. It says they opened their chests and gave him these gifts, treasures worthy of a king. And the story has an open ending. Warned in a dream not to trust Herod, the wise men took off by another road. And that's the story. There's so much in this story we could talk about and think about. In the past, God has given me messages about the wise men's coming to God being a spiritual journey and a model for worship and giving. But God's message for us today has to do with the ending of this story. What happens next? If we kept reading, we would hear about another road for the Holy Family. An angel appeared to Joseph in a dream and told him to fly, flee to Egypt with Mary and the child because Herod was going to search for Jesus and destroy him. Joseph immediately took them to Egypt by night. Herod was infuriated by the wise men's trickery, and he ordered the killing of all Bethlehem area children who were two years old or younger. When Herod died, the king was replaced by his son Archelaus, and Joseph was warned by an angel in a dream to take his family to Galilee. He made their home in Nazareth. Now, back to the wise men. We don't know what happened as they took that other road home. Did they live happily ever after? 
were those magi forever changed by their visit to the king of kings? I'm thinking that they never regretted all the work of organization and planning for the long journey and the gifts that they would take, that they never regretted crossing the boundaries of their own homeland or the work of providing for the camels or the risks of the trip. I believe that they never regretted following the star of wonder that led them to the light at the heart of all life, the light of the Christ who is love. After all, the truth of Epiphany for them and for us is that we are loved and we are part of that beautiful light of God. And we are called to shine for the healing of the world. We are called to do all the good we can by all the means we can in all the ways we can in all the places we can at all the times we can to all the people we can as long as we ever can. How can we not be changed when we meet the Lord? Mary Oliver, the Pulitzer Prize winning poet and six recognitions of our Lord, writes of just such a moment. Then she says, I go back to my own house, my own life, which now has become brighter and simpler, somewhere I've never been before. Perhaps the wise men in returning home saw everything more brightly and more simple, too. Surely the light they had found in a distant land turned out to be the light at the heart of their own land. And now they saw it as if for the first time. Now they were part of that light. Perhaps they reflected that light, the glory and the peace of God. And perhaps they began to understand the kind of peace that Pastor Darrell reminded us of in his Advent study the piece that John the Evangelist would write about in John 14, verse 27, where Jesus said to his disciples, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. Once again, on this Epiphany Sunday, we too can see the beautiful light as if for the first time we can feel God's love and hear God's call to serve. We may be called to take a path yet untaken with the promise of Jesus walking by our side. What could this new year bring if we open our eyes and ears to God's signs and messages? Can we journey with expectation and joy and wonder? Can we allow ourselves to dream of a new future following the star of Christ to his perfect light? And can we even be a part of that light? Can we keep the mood of Christmas as described by the poet Howard Thurman, who wrote, when the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flock, the work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild nations, to bring peace among all people, to make music in the heart. May the work of Christmas begin, my dear friends, in our hearts and in our community 
as we help those in need and share the good news of God's saving grace. Hallelujah.